Both teams looking to get back into the win column. Syracuse dropping their previous game to Georgia Tech. But they actually were outscored 21 to 10 in that fourth frame. The Blue Devils losing to rival in UNC. After a tough start offensively, we'll see if they have a better start offensively in this game. They only had their season low with five points in the first frame. Yeah, it was definitely a slow game, being 21-21 and a half. So I expect them at home to shoot the ball a little better. And how about that? Cues on the board first. Hyman with a nice three. We talk about Deja Fair, but Hyman is also a great scorer for this team. See the Duke starting five there. Not much has changed within conference play. Plus Taylor. Olympic scorer of her own. Gets an early look, but can't connect at the 15-footer. Syracuse, this is their sixth consecutive starting five rotation. A couple of players that have been very good as far as just putting everything together. Their inside presence, as you can see here, right on cue. So a three on one in, and then they come back with a nice interior look as well. And we talked to Coach Jack about uh, Dariana Lewis and her emergence and just her confidence and what she's been able to do for the Syracuse team. So I'm not surprised to see her, uh, you know, aggressive early on. Kennedy Brown had a nice dish outside for the three, can't connect there. So the Orange with an early 5-0 start. That's another thing for Syracuse, knocking down shots, but also for Duke, preventing, if they can't make a shot, they can't get in their press as well. Exactly, I think that's something they talked about in the, the Carolina game, is when the ball isn't going in, they need to rely on their defense and get back to the defensive team that they have been all season. Wood mishandles it a bit, an O board for Syracuse, something that they are good at. Top in the conference, might I add, in a turnover at the top of the key. Hyman didn't like her look at the top, so she'll send it out. Asia Fair behind the back. Hyman pull up off glass. And a bit off on the shot. That's going to be the challenge for this Duke defense is keeping those Syracuse guards um, out of the paint. Here you see Lewis moving without the ball and has the nice reverse layup against the size of Kennedy Browns. Great finish. Lewis is really impressed with how she's been able to perform. You asked her what was so different. If that one sells out of bounds, the Orange will get it back. We'll see if Duke will be able to set up in their full court press. But she gave us a few players that she was very impressed with. Lewis being one of them in their last couple of games. Even though they haven't seen the wins come from it. Very excited about how her team has been able to gel in the last few. Hyman breaks the press. Sends it to Lewis. Lewis can't connect. A rebound. Another old board goes to Wood, but that's stripped away by Taylor. Taylor hesitates. Valagoon. I think Celeste could have took that one all the way to the basket. Just a little bit of hesitation there, but Kara Lawson, as you can see, third season as Duke head coach. After a few years where they struggled and we didn't see them in NCAA, now sitting at the top of the ACC, just suffered their first loss in conference play, so the last ACC team with the loss. So just trying to bounce back, as you alluded to, just what she wants to see from this team and how they've grown even from years past. 11 transfers that we've seen from this group as well. But she said, this is a new team. Five of the 10 rotational players weren't here last year. So how they're going to try and come back and, and really establish what they want to be going forward. De'Asia Fair knows she wants to be going forward, and she will pour it in. Do not want to give her too many uncontested shots. So Syracuse, 7-0. And after we visit that very slow start that we saw Duke at UNC, and now the lid is off the cup, and Duke is on the board. Jay Wilson getting to her sweet spot. That pull-up jumper from her just looks so confident, so smooth. As you mentioned, that her season high 24, but a quick response from the Orange. 
You can see the energy from this Syracuse group. They are fired up, aggressive early. The pace of this game is fast. And now we're seeing that offense that we were alluding to earlier. That one almost poked away by Day Wilson. Coach Jack mentioned that she wanted her team to uh, be composed and do a good job at being able to handle the Duke press. And so far, things a little sloppy at times, but they've done a good job. Well, that's their first turnover at the top of the key, but we'll go back to Day Wilson doing Day Wilson things. Just like your shot, Jess. I do love the pull up. <laughs> can tease her over the season, averaging about eight points per game and how she stood out. 24 points. Another turnover for Duke. Leads to two on the other side for the Orange. It's the third turnover for the Blue Devils. Dave Wilson working her way inside, dishes it off. Oliver can't connect, and that just falls off the tip of the hands of Woolley. Woolley has been all over the floor, a very balanced player for the Orange, averaging about 10 points per game. But rebound, she's been really consistent, averaging about four. Really good at getting her hand on the ball in that department. When I talked to Coach Jack last week about her, she's actually their defensive captain. She really loves the defensive side of the ball and keeps them organized in that area. Celeste Taylor with a nice look on the inside. We said we wanted to see more from her. Those are easy ways to get the looks. Yeah, just to be aggressive, you know, take the, the shots and the opportunities that she has. But like I said, it's that competitiveness. When she's fired up, the team feeds off of that. Off the mark. Quick look on the inside. Wanted some contact there, but nothing there. There's those things down at the top of the key. It's another thing for Syracuse, one of the quicker teams in as far as offense in the league. But can also, in their half-court set, be very efficient at each level. Yeah, they, I mean, they have guards that can create their own shot, so getting them in the half court, while they like to play with pace, they're still able to score in the half court. Short shot clock, Woolley once again off of the tip of her finger, so Duke will get the ball back after the break, but not before we can talk about getting your hard hat. We'll talk about a couple of the Orange who have done just that through the season. Gatorade Fit. That's what it comes down to, and you can see a few players for the Orange that have done just that. Yeah, I love that. I think it it gives your team a different focus instead of the things that are publicly seen. There's a way to impact the game that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. So you can still feel good about how you're playing and how you're making your team better. Blue collar worker, coach says, in quotes, came to work and did their job. We always talk about that blue collar player just all, does all the little things but more importantly i like the way it's designed you see the little rhinestones yeah, on there i like it the bling <laughs> is nice shot off the mark for hyman as syracuse has the 11 to 6 lead tried addition underneath for de jesus and that's the fourth turnover for duke really? Bumped a little bit, He's trying to get it out to Hyman. It's been a little messy from both sides, trying to get the ball with some type of consistency. I think both teams just trying to speed up the other team on the defensive end and make them play fast, so you're seeing a little bit of sloppiness. I think it was a great question that you even posed to Coach Jack about how do you create that pace while also staying contained? Like, what does that look like for Syracuse at this point. I mean, that's also something she talked about, just in the difference between their win streak and, you know, dropping two games in a row is just staying locked into themselves, to their principles, to their discipline. And she had noted that she felt sometimes they did play too fast. Mm -hmm. 
Washington, who's dropping the last two. Their previous three, though, they took down Pitt, Clemson, and Boston College. Two of those were on the road, so this is a team that has definitely been able to bounce back in a lot of different ways from last year. Duke with another turnover. That's their fifth in the game, and another old board for Syracuse. Can't connect on that, so that's the next step. They get the old boards. They're leading the conference at about 15. But how they really connect on those second chance points. And Jesus with the mid range. She has been great off the bench all season for the Blue Devils. She's just a steady, great decision making guard. I really enjoy watching her play. Makes it a one possession game for the Blue Devils. Less than two minutes to play here in the first quarter. We talked about the pace. We've seen it go back and forth. Syracuse with the hot start. Deja Fair continues to get even hotter. Just get into that sweet spot. I mean, the challenge is to keep her out of the paint. We know how great of a scorer she is. So that is going to be a challenge all game for the Blue Devils. Talked about the backcourt. Nine points between Hyman and Fair. Yeah, a little shake and bake to the, to the elbow jumper. That is hot grease if you're talking about the shaking big because she can definitely lay it down. <laughs> she really can. Over 2,400 points in her career. Averaged 20 points for three years. And Buffalo as well. And that's just in four years. That's not a, you know, that, that looks like a fifth year. Right. <laughs> I think I had 20 points all together. <laughs> as Duke makes it a one possession game once again. And a turnover, or actually a travel, which will be another turnover. So Syracuse having a struggle taking care of the ball. Saturdays are for college basketball on ACC Network and the ESPN app. This week we have a quadruple header starting at 1 Eastern with NC State and Wake Forest. Then Kyle Filipowski leads Duke against Georgia Tech, followed by Hunter Tyson and number 19 Clemson taking on Florida State. And the day is capped off by Syracuse and Virginia Tech. Should be a great one. You can always watch everything on the ACC Network, all of the platforms that you can look for. Less than a minute to play here in the first quarter. We've seen the pace pick up drastically for Duke. Another slow start as there's a foul that's going to be committed against the Orange. So Sanaya Wilson picks up her first foul. A couple of substitutions for Syracuse. Fair takes a quick break. And Jesus takes the ball out. Pulls up, short. Bounces around a little bit before it finds the hands of Elena Rice. On a 10 second difference between game and shot clock. Hyman will slow things down. We already mentioned Hyman with a quick start. She has five points leading her team, two for six from the field. Working the baseline against De Jesus. Wooley, back iron. Another old board. We have some stoppage of play. This is going to go against the Orange. They had a good opportunity after that old board to have the last shot. Exactly. Just a little bit of a moving screen. I guess didn't give her enough time to to see the screen before she ran into it. Last second shot at the top of the key, just short. De Jesus could knock it down, but a much better start for Duke, even though Syracuse has the five point advantage after the first frame. New customers get our best deals on all smartphones. That's right. But what if I'm already a customer? Oh, no problem. Hey. Mentioned coming into this game, playing against another matchup is wanting to 
uh, make quicker decisions, purposeful cuts and movements, and I think that's something that they can just settle down and do better at. Syracuse has scored six points off of those turnovers as well as they get the ball back to start the second frame. And right out of the gate, get the bucket. We've seen a few mid-range shots for Syracuse go in. I think uh, the emphasis is obviously to keep them out of the paint, but you know, they need to contest shots better. And Jesus had a nice look at the rim off the glass. Couldn't connect, so we have a jump ball. This will stay with Duke. They'll get it underneath. I think so far when you see these two teams coming off the loss coming into this game, the urgency looks more to be uh, won by Syracuse. They look confident, they look assertive in the decisions that they're making, the shots that they're taking. Um, they really look like they're playing their basketball. Looks like they're starting to trust the process, as Coach Jack has alluded to us, as Duke now getting a number of O boards. Rice tried to run out in the passing lane, misses it. De Jesus off the glass. De Jesus with a slow start. A turnover at the top of the key. We'll see if they can convert. A foul is assessed. And that one will go against Hyman. Great hustle by De Jesus after the miss to get the ball back and put her teammate in a position to knock down some free throws. These are the first free throws for Duke. Gets it down, the first free throws of the ball game. Knocks down the pair. You can see the trap coming for Duke. That was something that Coach was really scared about. And just that, it can be suffocating when you go into those traps against Duke. And Hyman got herself in trouble. She dribbled right into the worst spot that you can dribble on the floor, right over the half-court line. She had nowhere to go. Good miscue for the Orange. That's the good thing that comes out of that, though, is when you turn the ball over and it's a dead ball turnover, you're able to set back up. Bear checks back in for Wooly. And how about that? Day Wilson still hot from the three-point line off of last game. Five points already for Cheyenne Day Wilson. And a quick response on the other side by Asia Strong. She was held scoreless in the previous game against Georgia Tech. That can come off the bench and add some length as well as physicality on the paint, as you can see on the inside. Nice dish underneath, rolls right out. And as Reagan Richardson is able to knock it off the leg of the orange. Syracuse just left her wide open, and of course, she is going to knock down that triple every time. Her 19th three of the season. You already mentioned her coming off 24 points. She had three threes in the previous game. So she definitely has a range as there's another jump ball that is assessed. This one will go back to Syracuse. Checks in the ball game for Syracuse. We saw a couple of substitutions for the Orange. Syracuse with the four-point lead. Less than eight minutes to play in the second. They had the hot start, as we were talking about, wanting to see if Duke was going to have a better response. It only took them three minutes to get on the board instead of five, in which we saw, actually six, in which we saw in the first, the previous game against North Carolina. Hyman asking for the scream at the top at the top of the key by Lewis. Instead, she avoids it and is able to draw the foul. That one's going to go against Reagan Richardson. That's her first personal foul. It's another thing, just 
seeing how Hyman has been able to adjust to a new role in this season as well. One of the only starter returning for Syracuse, but was in that two guard spot and now primarily at the top of the key as the ball handler. Yeah, and playing extended minutes at that position and doing really well. How about Elena Rice? She is now leading all scores with seven. I like the shots that Syracuse are getting. Uh, they, they're not forced. Everyone's touching it. It's, they have like a good chemistry going. Here, penetration by Hyman. She attacks the nail, kicks it for the open three for Rice. I think you can talk about just how each role has to be filled. A new team, new faces on the roster with only four players returning. She had seven transfers that came in for Syracuse. So how is it going to gel? We have Hyman, one of those players that was a standout in last season, knowing when and where to get the team involved, almost on cue, but can't connect with. That would have been a prayer. Right. That's the sixth turnover for the Orange. Les Taylor switches hands. That was a nice finish. The same foot lay-in. <laughs> nice. She now has four points. Could definitely help her to get some more of that. Just out in the open floor, get some easy buckets, and you know, get some points under her, and just kind of feel good and shake off the last game. And this is just a new game. Especially five points off of the turnovers. We're seeing a little bit more of that from Duke. Short shot clock, three. Rice once again, that one's well short. Here trying to slow down Celeste Taylor at the top of the key. Bay Wilson sends it over. Celeste Taylor can't knock it down. Another O board goes to Duke. And that one's just going to sell out of bounds. We're trying to see if it was tipped, and it indeed is. So Duke will get it back. Off the steal. Here you see Celeste Taylor doing what she does best, coast to coast, and transition for the easy lay. Easy? You're going to say that's easy? I mean, it was crafty, but <laughs> pretty much uncontested when she got to the rim. Russ Taylor averaging 12 points per game, the team's leading scorer as we have a substitution. Lydia Richardson taking a seat. Dave Wilson getting to a spot on the floor and knocks it down. She now has seven points. for Syracuse off of made buckets when we've seen Duke in their full court press, but so far they've been able to handle it the majority of the day. Short on the shot by Rice. Taylor assessing the floor. Since it's a Dave Wilson left alone once again, bad idea. Dave Wilson with 10 points, the only player in double figures. You're seeing this game kind of take a shift just from the defense. Getting, Duke is getting stops now. They're getting out in transition. They're, they're, they're playing more of their style of basketball, and you can see the comfort, the intensity just pick up. Rice had to fight for that look underneath, gets it to go. She now has nine. Now that was a tough basket. That was tough. <laughs> Seeing that pace, Celeste Taylor short on the mid-range shot. It's a perfect without Cheyenne Day Wilson. So far, her start, four for four, already knocked down two threes as well. Ten points leading all scores. She just looks good. She looks like she's continuing right where she left off in her great game against UNC, even though it, it ended as a loss. I expect her to come out here with this confidence, looking to be aggressive, and she's doing just that. She has ten points. The rest of the team with 12. They're five for 20 from the floor. On the other side, though, you're looking at two. What Rice has been able to do. She has nine of their last 11 points for Syracuse, so it's been a battle. We said we wanted fast pace. We're seeing it on both sides. Two teams that can really go. Syracuse hoping to find their footing once again in the win column after dropping their previous two. Great alongside Jasmine Thomas says we're less than five minutes to go here in the first half. Barry Wilson, really strong, and Lewis on the court for Syracuse. Short shot clock, and that sails out of bounds, as that's the seventh turnover for Syracuse. No lead 
changes, no ties. Syracuse still with a two-point lead. They outscored Duke 15 to 10 in the first frame. Dave Wilson has found her rhythm, finds Celeste, nice. and she's found hers. I love how Dave Wilson is attacking closeout. She's not settling for the, the, the drive and kick shot. She's putting pressure on the defense, and there you saw her get right back into the paint and set up her teammate for a great three-point shot. And getting to the nail, that's what every coach loves to see from their point guard. We've seen an immense amount of growth as Celeste Taylor runs the lane. Short on the shot, gets her own rebound. A tough collision underneath as well as her shoe popped off underneath. You see the ball movement, attacking the closeout, getting a piece of the paint, kicking it out to Celeste Taylor for the three. That's great offense right there. Just happy to see Celeste Taylor able to get up after that collision at the bottom. She was going after her own miss. Shoe came off, so she's just tightening it up a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, I'm glad she's okay. That didn't look good. Yeah, that was a little scary, so we know that she's tough as nails. Good to see her pop back up. Might feel that tomorrow. With all the resources you guys have here at Duke, <laughs> that cold tub is going to be amazing, I'm sure, at about 2.30. They really are amazing. I know I've shared some of that on social. I've been doing a, a lot of my rehab and recovery here. <laughs> Another turnover for Duke. That's their ninth. There's one stat that has been frustrating for both sides. It's them being able to take care of the ball. You know, you just don't want to give possessions away. You always want to value the ball. Um, yeah, both teams need to tighten up in that area for sure. Syracuse with eight, Duke with nine. Syracuse with the ball with three minutes to go here in the first half. Hyman behind the back. Celeste Taylor gets a hand in there. Day Wilson denied at the rim. There's blocks everywhere. It's just been a block party in Cameron Indoor at this point. We talked about the pace. We have not mentioned how physical this game is going to be as well. There you see the help side defense and just sends it. Yeah, trading blocks. You, you hear trading baskets, but trading blocks. It's interesting. Mia Heidi said, yeah, not in my home court. Not in her paint. Duke with their first lead of the ball game after their last bucket. Gets it back on the inside. No call on Balgoon. I'd like to see Deja Fair get a little bit more aggressive. She started off looking for her shot, um, but since hasn't really done too much. I would expect to see her to maybe be a little bit more aggressive. Ariana Lewis underneath was begging for the ball from Fair. And I love to see that. You know, she's leading her team, I think, with like eight double-doubles. Um, she has really been playing well over the last few games. You know, we talked about her emergence, and it's been significant in their success. I've been working the baseline. Jackson with a nice cutoff at the top of the key. Celeste Taylor going at fair. Lewis misses everything, and Heidi with the rebound. Balladoon. They get the ball back. Celeste Taylor in the right place at the right time. Doesn't get the bucket, but will get two free throws. Definitely getting rewarded for that effort, keeping that ball alive, and ending with a chance to hit two free throws here. 
And also her first free throws of the day. Well, here's our women's college basketball quadruple header for next Sunday. Louisville Syracuse is at noon Eastern. Then the 13th ranked Blue Devils take on Florida State, followed by the 17th ranked Tar Heels and Clemson at four. And number 12, Virginia Tech and Virginia Cap today should be another great afternoon of hoops on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. We'll be on the call for the Florida State Duke ball game. That's going to be a fun one. Yeah, it will be. You know, maybe we can, they'll allow us to have a little bias and make it a little fun. <laughs> we'll, we'll find a way. <laughs> Got to make a bet on that. Duke with their biggest lead of the ball game now of three after those two free throws knocked down. Duke on a 12-2 run. You said it was getting done by defense. I would say converting off of the turnovers as well. Off the mark for fair. The Jesus with the rebound. You can just see the intensity change. Woo. A nice find. Balagoon left all alone and made them pay. Four points. You love when your big rim runs and gets ahead of the defense. And De Jesus just finds it for the wide open lay-in. Less than a minute to play. And a foul is going to be called against Celeste Taylor. De Jesus keeps her head up, finds her teammate Balagoon in transition for the lay -in. But I like what you said, coming from a point guard, head up, understanding when and where, that's how you deliver the position. On target. She didn't have to reach for it, she just was able to turn and lay it in. Bryce asking for the screen on the side of the floor. Didn't like her look to Wilson, skips it cross court. Hyman at the top of the key. Really working to get to her shot, back iron. The Jesus has been all over the boards. And at the start of the game, you saw Duke giving up some of those mid-range shots uncontested. So that was a great job by De Jesus to stay in front and make that a tough shot. And see Duke right now turning down good shots for better shots. A couple of players like the look they have, but have 10 seconds left in this half, so we'll look for the last shot. De Jesus, this is about to Balagoon, and she gets fouled. Actually, they're gonna call a travel here. Got herself turned around a bit. I feel like if she would have been able to catch that square and come down on two feet, that maybe that would have been a call the other way. But you see, she's already turning and shuffling her feet. Interesting in her landing spot as well. So. I know. It, it could have gone both ways. I think if she would have just landed square instead of already turning. Oops. Travel. That one goes against Rice. That's the tenth of the half for the Orange. Another opportunity to have, to have had the last shot of the quarter. And, I don't know, just uh, moving a little too fast. Taylor, very close to knocking that one down, but couldn't get it. So Duke ended on a 14-2 run. Syracuse looking to fine-tune some things on the offensive end. We'll send it to our people, Drew, Drew Carter and Ivory Lada, in the studio, breaking it down. What's up, Angel? Great first half. At Plus one in the well. fourth time that it's been done. So something where in coming into this game, they knew how good this defense was for Duke and how they counted. Yeah. I think just by being composed, you know, they turned the ball over a little bit. Uh, they started to settle for, you know, got a little rattled. Once the game settled in, they, they weren't getting the shots that they wanted. So I think just more composure for Syracuse will help in this half. And right out of the gate, Duke is on the board. You can see the star watch. We came into the game talking about the prolific score in the Asia Fair for Syracuse held to four points, and those were all in the first, first quarter. And that's credit to Duke's defense, but also I think she could look to be more aggressive. She was she was really trying to get her teammates involved, with the, which is an emphasis for her this season. She's done a great job at facilitating as well, but I think you got to look for her to get more drives to the basket like that. Couldn't connect there. And on the other side, we talked about Dave Wilson. You see her with the 10 points, and that's a turnover at the top of the key by Balagoon. But going back to that second quarter, we said Duke outscored 
Syracuse 19 to nine. Well, 15 of those points were between Celeste Taylor and Cheyenne Day Wilson. Jasmine, we talked about how Cheyenne has been doing her work in the last few games, but Celeste Taylor is the key for them in their success. She is. When they're able to get stops or get steals and the balls in Celeste's hands, she gets out on the open floor, and if she's not scoring, she's getting it to her teammates to score. So uh, Cheyenne Day Wilson has been, uh, some of her points have been the result of that, and then the other has just been her creating her own. Well, ask and you shall receive, Jazz, because you said you wanted to see a little bit more aggression out of Fair. She's able to draw the foul there. She hasn't scored since the 148 mark in the first quarter. And now gets two free throws. I love that she's unselfish. I love that she, you know, tries to get her teammates involved. She tries to let the game come to her. But she truly is a terrific scorer. So I think if she puts her mind to it and she wants to be more aggressive, she, it will be challenging because this defense is going to challenge her. But I think absolutely she can score some more in this half. She has the eyes of the entire nation. The Woodard Award preseason top 50 and was voted as the ACC newcomer as well. But we'll get into who you think that ACC newcomer is coming into this league. Florida State has a freshman that has been on fire. Balagoon gets the rebound, doesn't like the spin, and so she's fouled. That one's going to go against Mariana Lewis. That's going to be her second. So Lewis picks up her second. She'll take a seat. Knocks down the first. And all right, we've seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. This winter, ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic to take video, tag it with hashtag all the devotion and post it to your social. You just might see it on the ACC Network. I don't know, Jasmine and I have already tried this. We really want to see if this is going to work. We want to make sure that we're on the ACC Network too, right? <laughs> we want to post one, <laughs> hashtag off. Yeah, we're going to do it. We'll do it at another time. Oh, look at this. That would be a great hashtag. All the devotion right there. Start them early, right? Yeah. You can read it. It was very cute. It was very nice. I actually what a great baby just sleeping through this game. <laughs> Balagoon is able to pick up the steal underneath. That's the 11th turnover for the Orange. He got 10 in the first half. So let's <laughs> I tell you what, Day Wilson doesn't need much deck because she, she has been so impressive in these last few games, Jess. She really has. And just today, just her composure. She's not getting sped up. She's, she's taking the shots and making the decisions that she wants to make and dictating what she wants to do. Has been off the mark. She's one for three, over two from distance. And that one bounces around. And that one's able to go down. And that's what they want to do turn their defense and the offense, push the pace. They're really comfortable right now. So Syracuse would need to score. Their, their, their best defense might be some offense right now. Turn down her own shot at the top of the key. Turn over here, but Day Wilson. Day Wilson with the, the double move. Nashes along the baseline and finishes with the reverse. Then you have Celeste Taylor again in the open floor, finding Reagan in transition for the layup. We talked about the struggle for Syracuse offensively. The last bucket came at the five minute mark of the second quarter. Emily comes out of the pack fair with the ball. Bounce passes it on the inside, but a travel call against Strong. Syracuse just can't find their rhythm to start this half. Do you think it's more of the hesitation? We're seeing 13 turnovers already from Syracuse, not overthinking the game. Yeah, I think that is, they, you don't want to make a mistake. You, you want to, you can feel the game kind of, the deficit open it up so you just want to make sure you're making the right decisions but they can't play tentative they still have to play free they were doing a lot of good stuff in the first half that they've gone away from that one popped up sent straight to the hands of Hyman Hyman sends it off the fair fair right off the rim little frustration from her right there Syracuse 11 for 28 from the field shooting 37 percent Celeste Taylor misses the mark but another old board for Duke 
Duke just playing harder right now. You can see it in the intensity. Uh, Syracuse in transition had an opportunity for the two on one and just can't see the ball go through the hoop right now. So Sean picked up her second personal foul. We see some substitutions for Syracuse. Got Rice, Wilson, Strong, Woolley, and Hyman on the floor for the Orange. Taylor, Balatoon, Brown, Richardson, and Dave Wilson for Duke. Brown left alone. Hyman, nice look on the inside. Couldn't connect. And to your point, Jasmine, you said missed opportunities. Bully gets a hand on that one, sends it out of bounds, and they'll be able to get set as we have a couple of substitutions now for Duke. Brown and Dave Wilson. Actually, Brown and Balagoon will take a seat. Dave Wilson didn't like her look at the top of the key. Taylor. Puts on a move, sends it over at the top of the key, and, and why not? Chorus Dale with a nice shot at the top. Duke doing a great job at just sharing the ball, you know, not settling for a shot and just really working to get their best shot. And there you see Chorus Dale with a wide open free throw jumper. It's been all Duke, and they've been on fire. 39 to 26 here in the third. Has this ever happened to you? How was school? Duke with a 13-point lead, but they've gotten things done on the defensive end. You can see the opponents that they've held to 50 points or less down the list, and they're trying to see if they can do the same thing with Syracuse. They held Syracuse to 24 points in the first half. You can see they're ranked as far as points allowed, third in the nation. ACC, though, number one team on the defensive end. Continue to just shine as Fair finally hits a field goal because that's the first field goal for Syracuse since the five-minute mark of the second quarter. Yeah, they've struggled to, to score, and she has all their points, I think, they scored the two free throws and yes. now that field goal. Correct. And so for them to go through that drought, only have the, the four points for Fair, this is still a ball game. 11-point lead for Duke. But Syracuse with enough scores. Yeah, they gotta get stops. And they gotta they gotta get stops and they gotta get good looks at the basket. So Celeste Taylor picks up her third personal foul. So Jackson will come in. But what an improvement for Celeste Taylor. Two points, one for six in the previous game. And now with nine points, he has a triple on the day. And four rebounds to round it out. And she's still not the most efficient from the floor today, but her impact is felt all over the floor. And that's what she does for this Duke team. So the officials will step aside. We'll do the same. Dukes still in charge, 39-28. See the Duke faithful in the building. Oh, wait a minute. I see a Syracuse hat as well. Trying to see if their team is able to dig themselves out of this 11-point deficit. How about the Asian Fair? That's a good place to start. The leading scorer, 19 points on the season tonight. Only eight. There have been some missed opportunities, and I know for a team that you can see coming out of the half, the emphasis has been able to get the ball inside, but they've been a little narrow-sighted on what's been evolving on the outside as well. Yeah, we've seen some plays where they've missed her, where she could have had some easy opportunities. She's a player that averages about 17 shot attempts a game and only has seven today. Uh, so, you know, they, they have to find their best player. She's one of the three captains, and Vaughn Q. Jasmine says, I'm going to get 
to the spot. Making it her 20th game in double digits. There it is. Finally enters the double figure. Scoring with 10. Only had four points at half. And only with six now, she has all of their points here in the third quarter. Yeah. Tough look on the inside. Sanaya Wilson be able to step up to the free throw line. Bear with a behind the back. Hezzy cross. Gets to her pull-up jumper at the elbow. Has all six points for her team in this quarter. You can see her dad very happy about what he's been able to see. Always wears the hoodie. Put her picture on there as well. Well, here's our women's college basketball quadruple header for next Sunday. Over Syracuse is at New Eastern. Then the 13th ranked Blue Devils take on Florida State, followed by the 17th ranked Tar Heels and Clemson at four. 12th ranked Virginia Tech and Virginia Cap today. Should be another great afternoon of hoops on the AC Network and the ESPN app. We've seen great games throughout this year. Upset after upset. Teams that we thought were going to be at the top of the ACC are in the middle of the pack. A lot of votes didn't go towards Florida State as well. You can see how they've been able to really emerge. Receiving votes in the top 25. The league is strong. I love to see it. It makes it exciting to watch. But Duke sitting on top. Only one loss in the ACC. And, you know, you got to talk about Charlie Cream. Every time we talk about numbers, we talk about seeding, you got to mention with Charlie Cream, he does not sleep. <laughs> this is what he's projected so far. You can see the seeds going down. How about Virginia, even in the conversation? They had an incredible start. Had the 12 0 start after only winning five games last season. Notre Dame at the two seed, Olivia Miles, one of the most prolific point guards in not just the league, but the country. She really is. We talk about dynamic. She does everything. And it's just been fun to watch her play, watch her grow and emerge as a leader on that team as well. had the matchup between Fair. They didn't get an opportunity there. Another O'Board. Hyman able to draw the contact. She'll step up to the free throw line. She's also been quiet. She had five points in the first quarter. She's still sitting at that number as we're three minutes left in the third quarter. And I love that decision to attack the closeout and put pressure on the defense, be aggressive, get to the foul line. But there is still some opportunities. You see again there where you had Fair on the wing. Um, to maybe get her some good looks. She has all their points in this quarter. Maybe you can get her kind of going a little better. Um, I love the decision. This was, you know, a great take by Hyman, but we mentioned kind of like adjusting to that point guard role is maybe that's an opportunity to get your best score a wide open look. And just like that, Syracuse is able to work their way back into this one with a 7-0 run. Just to revisit the action that we saw. It's a tale of two halves because the Q's after their hot start, 7-0 start against Duke. They had the lead, 22-15 in the second quarter. Duke went on a 24-4 run. They had the lead at halftime. Syracuse trying to see if they can regain. For a little under three minutes to play in the third quarter. We also have to talk about the momentum switch a little bit too because Duke had an intensity and an urgency to them to start the half and that has kind of settled and they have not been able to extend the lead. And they're searching for a bucket. They've gone five minutes without a field goal. And Jesus works the baseline. Three second call is gonna go against Duke so that's another turnover. That's their 14th of the ball game. So the drought continues for Duke offensively. I would expect them to look to get the ball back into Day Wilson's hands and get her going again. Day Wilson has two points this half. I have to try to rip that one in there. A couple of orange on the floor, but this is going to go back to Duke. Another turnover. We've mentioned it going back and forth. 
And Syracuse picks up their 15th. So right now, if the game ended, both teams would be about at their average as far as turnovers, but we still have a frame to go. Mm -hmm. And honestly, Jasmine, too, a couple of these turnovers that we're seeing are unforced. They are. It's kind of been like that all game, you know, just kind of like casual, unforced turnovers. We got 29 total turnovers in this ball game, 28 total made field goals, so you're not going to score without the ball. That's the graph. On the inside, a nice look, and that ends the drought as Kennedy Brown is able to go over the right shoulder and picks up her sixth point of the ball game. Kennedy Brown for two seasons at Oregon State, one of two Oregon State actual transfers. That's fair. Doesn't get that to connect, but you need opportunities like that. Kyra Wood gets on the board for the first time in this ball game. That's another player that Coach Jack talked about, Kyra Wood, and what she's been able to do from an energy standpoint, from her length, and being able to rebound and finish around the rim. And there you see her making an impact right there at a time where they need her to. In that previous play, Hyman picked up her second personal foul. So 90 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Two possession ball game. On the inside, another look. And just a little bit too, too much to handle. Another turnover. We've said it throughout the ball game. It's physical. The game's getting physical right now. Um, you know, Duke right there probably wanting a call for a foul, but being able to just own your space and you know make a clean pass out to your teammate, be strong with the ball. Coaches up off the bench. And the officials know how they feel fair at the top of the key. You see Richardson just face guarding fair. It's a nice look on the inside by Sanaya Wilson. She worked hard for that. She was working and working to get her position on that block. They finally got it to her, and she made a nice, strong move. It's her first field goal of the ball game as we are less than a minute to go here in the third. Four-point ball game. Duke has struggled offensively. But how about that one going down for Richardson? That's her fourth point of the ball game. And that's where they had success before, earlier, was just collapsing the defense, making an extra pass, finding the open player, making open shots. That's what she has in front of her. They'll hold for the last shot. Eight on the game clock. Stop and pop. Hyman back iron. And that will do it for the third quarter. As Duke just slight Syracuse in the third quarter, 14 to 13. So Syracuse coming back, trying to work it to this deficit, made it a two possession ball game. This one isn't over. 15 on boards and Wood, a big factor of that in the third quarter. And it's the little things on the road that lead to wins. Those hustle plays, sacrificing your body, giving, going for 50-50 balls. Like those are the things that it's going to take for them to come away with a win on this floor. Duke went the last five minutes only scoring four points in that third quarter. Talk about the emergence of Syracuse as fair is so crafty with finding her shot and getting to it. Her dad will be really not happy about the way she was able to do that. And it's noticeable how aggressive she's being now compared to when we were talking about earlier. She was kind of just trying to feel the game, get her teammates involved. She's making a, a huge effort to be aggressive. All right, well, Saturdays are for college basketball on ACB Network and the ESPN app. This week we have a quadruple header starting at 1 Eastern. NC State, Wake Forest, then Kyle Filipowski leads Duke against Georgia Tech. And then we got Clemson taking Florida State. The day is capped off by Syracuse, Virginia Tech. Should be a great afternoon of hoops, always on the ACC Network.
talk about the streak of Fair with double figures. Third in the ACC in scoring. And second on D1 active career leader points. We talked about her scoring over 2,400 points. They need a bunch of them in the fourth. Getting to the basket, doesn't get it to go down. Day Wilson just lost it. And they've got numbers. And they convert. Elena Rice with the bucket. And we're looking at a two-point ball game. Correction there, that was Kyra Wood, and she now has four. A lot of action at the top of the key. Oliver able to get it back out. Since it's a Balagoon underneath, nothing there. Wood has been all over the floor. She almost came up with another O board, but steps on the line, so that is going to go back to Syracuse. She talked about the second looks, the opportunities, being in the right place. Wood has been there. I mean, it's the hustle. You know, here you see they don't give up on the play. Ball kind of gets tipped around. They come up with it. It ends up with a basket, and you compound these plays on each other, and you have yourself in a ball game. So that was almost put off underneath. The officials all over it have been the entire ball game. You talked about it being a WNBA crew as you have Eric Green, but you and Edward Sadlaski. Another turnover almost coughed up. Instead, they're trying to send it up to Fair and do indeed turn it over. Just sped up a little bit too much in that possession. And you almost saw it coming. You have Balagoon with two deflections right away off the first two inbounds, and then it almost gets turned over on the sideline here, and then it ends up ultimately going back to Duke. That's a credit to their effort, to their activeness, their deflections, getting their hand on the ball. And being dialed in, a team that has done it consistently all season. Kara Lawson talked about the dip in production as far as defense from her team in ACC play. Day Wilson said that might have been off of Hyman. That'll be the 17th turnover for the Blue Devils. Gets along the baseline. Who? Oh. She might be right. I don't know. Saw a little tip, but. I think you have to acknowledge that Syracuse has picked up their intensity on the defensive end, collapsing, uh, recovering out when passes are being made to the open players. They really have Duke a little indecisive right now. In this possession, they could take the lead or tie it. We haven't seen the lead since the five-minute mark in the second quarter. That was 24 to 22, and Celeste Taylor gets the rebound. Is just slung to the ground. A foul called. So Sanaya Wilson picks up her first. We'll go back to that look. It's a great rebound. She just has three bodies surrounding her. Like I said earlier, the game is physical. Coach Lawson is making sure her opinion is heard. I mean, at the beginning, the middle, and the end, just wanting that foul called at some point in that possession. She indeed gets it. So the team has a two-point lead, less than eight to go in the ball game. Oliver pulls up, gets it to go. That's her first field goal of the ball game. And a much-needed bucket at that point, at this point in the game. Talked about building on your runs. Jess Taylor able to get a nice look on the board. She has a matchup against Fair. The matchup you would expect to see. She is the best defender on this Duke team. Off the back iron, fair. Duke doesn't have numbers, so Les Taylor is going to pull this one out. Dave Wilson has been quiet this half. She's had shot the ball well today. He's had a great offensive game. Interesting to see what she does here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Dave Wilson only has two points in this second half after she left the first half with 10 points. But Oliver getting to her spot on the floor.
Spent two years at Baylor. Had the Achilles injury that prevented her from playing as well. Ranks 15th nationally in assist to turnover, though. Just one of those players that thinks she makes some magic happen with the ball, and so does Balagoon. And she now has eight points. She really does. Oliver is a great facilitating player. Doesn't look to score too much. She's absolutely capable of doing that, but she gets the ball where it needs to go at the right time. And I love her length as well. 5'10", out of Prosper, Texas. Gets the fake, penetrates baseline, finds Balagoon in the paint for the short jumper. And always up. Just knows when and where. That's the indicator for a great point guard, but just playmaking. High IQ, yeah. points on the ball game. This is it on the inside. That was almost blocked. Instead, a foul will be called, so. Duke fans not too pleased with that call. I don't know, they may have. A bit of contact on yeah. the arm there, across her body, but. So Sonia Wilson step up to the free throw line. Hasn't scored yet in this ball game. Still over. This was actually her first attempt from the free throw line. Hasn't really attempted anything from the field as well. Five recent games has been held scoreless and now knocks down the first point of the ball game. So still, Jasmine, here we are with Syracuse trying to work their way back. They have a five-point deficit. Duke has been doing a great job of, even in their spells of the scoring drought, doing things well on the defensive end. Which is exactly what they wanted to take away from, from that Carolina game. Was even when they're not scoring, they still need to be locked in defensively, able to get stops and have an impact on that end. A little bit of the two-man game between Fair and Hyman, trying to work the top of the key. Plus Taylor, switched out on Hyman. Asking to clear it out, gets to the middle of the paint. That's blocked by Celeste Taylor. And Kennedy Brown gets the rebound. Another situation of a lot of contact. Instead, it's going to be called a jump ball. Stays in the hands of Duke. It's a few times now you see Syracuse <laughs> consist consistently crowding the rebounder. If they were able to, you know, get a few of those out quickly, they would have some easy points in transition. I'm more entertained now by how Kara Lawson is just losing it on the sideline with each call here. We're just happy that this is a great ball game. Two great teams coming into this one. Syracuse entering ACC with their ACC play at 500. And Duke trying to avoid going back-to-back -back games losing in conference play. Tisha Hyman picks up her third personal foul. The only other player in a little bit of foul trouble for Syracuse is Strong with three. So that really hasn't been a worry. I want to speak too soon in this ball game. Celeste Taylor doesn't like the look. Foul is assessed. You know, I talked about Day Wilson being quiet in this half, but we also haven't seen much of Rice from Syracuse, who had a strong first half. I believe she had all nine of her points in the first half. Yes. And he picks up the foul. And how about that look? Richardson with a nice kiss off the glass picks up her six point. It's a great. Baseline out of bounds, execution, getting your shooter into the sweet, soft spot of the defense for a wide open, just bank shot. Richardson, sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina. She played her freshman season at UGA. Played 29 games and now finding a home here with Duke. Fair just has not been able to knock down the shot. These are the looks that she's usually knocking down. Yeah, sometimes, some days the ball just doesn't go in. But she has to stay aggressive. Top 
talked about her scoring double figures in all 19 games, now 20. She has nine games with 20 points or more this season. Another foul assessed against Syracuse, so back-to-back -back possessions where Syracuse has fouled Duke. And Duke is trying to hold on to this lead. We're heading into the final stretch as they have the seven-point lead over the Orange. Gatorade Fit. 18 left in this ball game. Duke with a seven point lead over Syracuse. A couple of the stars that we mentioned coming into this ball game that had a standout first half. Cheyenne Day Wilson and Celeste Taylor. They had 15 of the 19 points in the second quarter. They had two in the third. How about being held scoreless in the fourth? So other players having to step up for Duke. But that's exactly what plays into the thought of Carol Lawson just going so deep in her bench. Yeah, they, they usually do it by committee. You know, they're not typically playing through any one player. Um, and I would say just the, you know, them having zero in the fourth, it's not necessarily just about looking to score. Yep. You know, I feel like it's just, it hasn't by design kind of gone into their hands in scoring situations, but I would look for them to, to be aggressive here to close the game. Absolutely, you can see how it's been done by committee, as you mentioned. 32 points on average coming from the bench on ACC play, though, about 15. Now we're gonna miss that free throw at the top, but Celeste Taylor has her back and is able to get a steal. That's the 17th turnover for the Orange. We've been back and forth with how both teams have struggled with taking care of the ball in this ball game. Dave Wilson finds Balagoon at the baseline. Richardson, beautiful touch, hands on five, and gets the end one to Balagoon. That truly was a beautiful pass, just kind of spread the needle right there. So Balagoon now with 10 points. Tacks the baseline, defense comes over, finds her big under the basket for the end one. Now the second Duke player with double figures. We have some stoppage of play. We'll have a substitution that's called in by Eric Bruton. Well, every Thursday at 10 Eastern right here, after our women's basketball doubleheader, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of every women's game. And look ahead at the best games on the schedule in the coming week. That's coverage you can only get one place right here on the AC Network and the ESPN app. Empty possession for Duke there. How about Dave Wilson? They're just playing pace up defense before the ball is even given to Syracuse out of bounds. Bear gets it. And even with the turnovers, honestly, Syracuse has taken care of the ball within just trying to break the full court press from Duke. It's just been the other turnovers, the careless turnovers underneath that have been the problem. Is a nice look on the inside. That one going to Elena Rice. I was just talking about her. She had such a great first half. 11 points, so two players now for Syracuse are in double figures. Her and Fair. May Wilson with the retreat dribble. Touch pass. Duke really working the ball well. Five left on the shot clock. Dave Wilson short. Bear with the rebound. That was such great ball movement. You almost wanted to see that shot go in. Rice gets another crack at it. And drains it. Two possession ball game, 237 left in this one. We've seen it go both ways. This should be a fun finish. Instacart shoppers know your Just a two possession game. Syracuse still down 46 to 51 against Duke, but Elena Rice has been the bright spot for Syracuse. Last year she only averaged four points and four rebounds. Now she's leading this team in scoring for this ball game. And she's really done it all game. She had a quiet little moment, um, but now here she is hitting a baseline jumper. She's really been scoring the ball well today. So we've seen it kind of spread out. You can see her with the 13 points. She's been very efficient from the field as well, but 
It's very telling, too. We wanted to see even more what we were going to see from Hyman. She had the five points in the first half, only two in the second. And so if one person doesn't show up, you have to make sure the next does. Rice has been that player for the Orange. Yeah, just think in moments, say, honestly, both teams have not been able to find like a true rhythm and a flow. Right. You know, we had talked about even when things looked like they were going well, then there'd be back-to-back -back turnovers or back-to-back -back missed shots or just, you know, not really a good rhythm to the game. on the play, so if there's one thing that Duke has been able to do is apply pressure in the back line of Syracuse. And you see Wilson just brings that hand down right across the arms of Kennedy Brown. It's her third personal foul. Kennedy Brown can't connect. This is another player that struggled the other night against Carolina, and the challenge is just you know, for the veterans to step up. Um, I believe that the response from Taylor has been great today. Yes. Um, it's you know, nice to see Kennedy have some takes down, layer down low, staying aggressive, getting herself to the free throw line. And establishing herself. That's what we're seeing a little bit more of. You mentioned this, the tough night she had in the previous game against the Tar Heels. We only had the two free throws. And there's a turnover at the top of the key. Celeste Taylor gets it to go. And that's a nice look from Richardson, with that being the 11th point. So three players for Duke now in double figures. That kind of, yeah, kind of felt like the momentum shifter right there, to get that steal, finish the two on one, and get the steal right back off the inbound. A little deflating sequence of events for Syracuse. And if that wasn't, that might be, because Celeste Taylor, a back-to-back -back buckets, that's gonna lead to a timeout for Syracuse. Coach Jack, not too thrilled about what she has seen from her squad. But she mentioned the sense of urgency, and Duke right now is continuing to build their lead. It was a two-possession game, and now they're sitting at a 10-point lead with less than 90 seconds to go in this ballgame. Yeah, and I mean, they just did it with composure. They stuck to what they do, playing defense. There you see the momentum shifter starts with defense. You get the, you get the steal, you get out in transition, you follow it up with another steal, back-to-back -back buckets, and now you're at a 10-point game. As we are approaching the last few moments of this ball game, Duke has all four timeouts left. Syracuse has the one, but it comes down to who's going to be able to knock down shots for Syracuse. We saw Wood in the third quarter that was really on the glass as that's knocked back out of bounds by Richardson. And they've had trouble inbounding against this full court Duke press. Just more of a clear out here as Rice is able to get the ball up the court. They're asking for the ball. Not much time. They need to get going. Approaching the one minute mark. Bear working at the top of the key, short. A foul, this will stay here. And they'll get the ball back underneath. Syracuse not in the bonus. Duke is in the bonus. Foul on Duke will put Syracuse at the free throw line. 106 to play. Fair from the corner. Misses. And that one goes about through two orange hands. Celeste Taylor leaks out and gets the bucket. Megan Richardson has really been impactful in transition in this fourth quarter. Getting the ball, getting looking up, making the long outlet passes, finding her teammates. She found Balagoon on the and one. She's really made an impact in this fourth quarter. I mean, look at how many people this goes through on the orange. I bet they want this one back, and Richardson just putting a nice bow on that one.
Jackson knocks down the first of the pair. Another transfer from Buffalo. Three games and double figures. ACC play, though, has not really put on a performance. Now she has six points. It's the second ACC game that she has actually scored in. She had four previous points against Wake Forest. She continues to find her footing here with Syracuse. Fair was trying to decide if she wanted to foul or not. Finally commits the foul. Duke in the bonus. With the amount of time that Fair has been on the court as well, it's surprising to see that that's just the first foul from Fair and that it had to be committed at the top of the key. As Dave Wilson just continues to shine, knocks down another one from the free throw line. Gets them both. Hyman tries to send it up to Fair. You can't say enough about the defense at the top of the key. And Richardson with the bump. That will put Rice back on the free throw line. But the biggest question coming into this ball game was just how they were going to to respond, the bounce back. And that was very interesting with Carol Lawson telling us sometimes the bounce back isn't just in a win. The bounce back is how we respond emotionally, effort-wise, and how dialed in we are defensively. Even though we saw some droughts offensively from this team and not the best start that they would want, but how they were able to work together to get to this point defensively to hold one of the best backcourts in this league and contain them pretty much all game. Yeah. Coach Lawson wanted to see them compete, and that's exactly what they have done today. So we'll take a look at who Duke has on the horizon. And this one is close to coming to an end. Well, this is who they have coming up next. Virginia Tech, who has been rolling in ACC play, 12th ranked on Thursday. Then we talked about the game to cap off January. And they'll have that one against Florida State, Pitt, Notre Dame, and Boston College for their last three out of the next five that they have. But I think two of the ones that you have circled on there, obviously, are Notre Dame and Virginia Tech. But Florida State, not a team that to be taken lightly as they're receiving votes as well. I can tell you what, too. Boston College has been really impressive, a team that upset NC State. And then the next game, even though Florida State wasn't ranked, beat them on their home floor as well. Yeah, I think it's, I love what they're doing there from the defensive standpoint. Hyman picks up her fourth personal foul. It's been a struggle for her throughout this ball game. She does have seven. We mentioned she had the five points in the first half, only two in the second. And I think what's very interesting as well is just the limited amount of times that they've been able to put themselves at the free throw line. This is a very aggressive team and only been to the free throw line one time for Tisha Hyman. It's credit to the defense to be able to be that aggressive without fouling on uh, scoring moves by Syracuse. But also, sometimes you gotta just put your head down and get there. That will pretty much do it as we have a timeout that is actual, actually called by Duke. So at 11.6 left, we talked about who Duke has. We'll go on the other side and look at who Syracuse has on the horizon as well. It doesn't get much easier for them. Virginia, they have Louisville, who has struggled throughout the season. Louisville was the preseason favorite right ahead of NC State. Then they'll take on Virginia Tech right after that to start off February. Boston College and North Carolina will finish out their next of five. And for Syracuse, this is a team that was trying to get back on track after winning three of their previous ACC games. They dropped the last two. We'll drop this one as well. A few things that you saw in them today, but also what they can build on going forward. 
I mean, I liked how they started this game. Uh, they really had a nice tempo to them, a confidence to them. And then as the game settled, uh, it's kind of what Coach Jack was talking about, leading them to play a full 40-minute game. And that will do it as Duke will avoid being upset and takes care of business at home. They move to 17 and 2 and will take care of business here at Syracuse. Drops another one. We'll send it to the studio where Drew Carter and I, Relata, have been holding it down in the second.